What's that? An egg. A square egg? That's ridiculous. Ain't that a square egg? How'd you do it, Mr. Douglas? They planted the egg. I didn't know you could plant eggs. How'd you do that? Green Acres, a beloved sitcom from the 1960s, brought laughter to millions with its fish-out-of-water content that left the fans coming for more. At the time, the show had a significant number of followers and set the tone for modern-day sitcoms. While the show was on air, it did maintain good ratings. But it turned out that in the face of time, not even the show's popularity could save it from being tossed by CBS. Sit tight as we unravel the unfortunate turn of events that saw the collapse of this amazing show. Let's get on it. Our journey starts with the show's stars, Eddie Albert and Eva Gabor. Albert, a charismatic actor known for his roles in films like Roman Holiday, brought a folksy charm to Oliver Wendell Douglas, the city lawyer with a dream of becoming a farmer. Gabor, a member of the famous Hollywood Gabor sisters, was a comedic powerhouse known for her wit and elegance. As Lisa Douglas, Oliver's glamorous wife completely out of her element in Hooterville, Gabor perfectly complimented Albert's portrayal. However, Green Acres, the beloved sitcom that brought laughter to millions with its city versus country antics, wasn't born in a television writer's room. Its roots stretch back to the golden age of radio, where a show with a strikingly similar premise captured audiences just a decade earlier. This is the story of Granby's Green Acres, the radio program that laid the groundwork for the iconic television series. In 1950, CBS Radio was looking for a summer replacement for their popular Lux Radio Theater. This was when Jay Summers caught their attention. He was a prolific writer and producer with a knack for crafting comedic situations. Summers, inspired by his own childhood experiences on a struggling farm near Greendale, New York, pitched a show called Granby's Green Acres. Jay Summers, the creative mind behind the beloved sitcom, wasn't always destined for a life in television. His journey began in a world far removed from the quirky characters and rolling hills of Hooterville. Let's take a look into Summer's early life, uncovering the experiences and influences that shaped the man who brought us city slickers struggling on a farm. For Summers, education seemed to have been a priority in his youth. He attended City College of New York, a prestigious public institution known for its strong science programs. His chosen field of study was chemistry. This seemingly incongruous fact with his future career path hints at a logical and analytical mind, a quality that may have served him well later in his life as a writer and producer who meticulously crafted comedic situations. Somewhere along the line, the call of the creative spark became too strong to ignore. The exact turning point remains a mystery, but Jay Summers eventually abandoned his chemistry studies and embarked on a new path, immersing himself fully in the world of comedy writing, and he was really good at it. This transition period in the 1930s and early 1940s is shrouded in some obscurity. However, we can assume that Summers honed his comedic skills by writing for smaller venues, possibly local radio shows or newspapers, the burgeoning radio industry offered fertile ground for aspiring comedy writers, and it's likely that Summers found his voice and developed his writing style during this formative period. By 1940, Jay Summers had landed his first documented gig as a gag writer for the legendary Milton Berle. This was a significant break, showcasing his talent and potential in the competitive world of comedy writing. Berle, known for his brash and improvisational style, was a demanding star, and working for him would have required a quick wit and the ability to think on one's feet. These are skills that would become crucial for Summer's future success. Summer's career continued to blossom in the world of radio. He wrote for various shows at the Blue Network station WJZ in New York, including the Chamber Music Society of Lower Basin Street. The exact nature of these writing contributions remains unknown, but it's safe to assume that Summers was honing his comedic voice and developing a strong understanding of radio as a medium for storytelling and humor. In the late 1940s, Jay Summers, like many other creative minds drawn by Hollywood's allure, made the move west to California. This decision opened doors to new opportunities 
and a wider audience for his comedic talents. Summers began writing for a variety of radio shows, collaborating with established stars and building a solid reputation within the industry. The 1950s proved to be a defining decade for Jay Summers. He became a prolific writer, contributing to numerous radio shows. Some of the notable programs he worked on include The Great Gildersleeve, My Friend Irma, The Amos and Andy Show, and Dennis the Menace. These shows, while diverse in themes and target audiences, allowed Summers to showcase his versatility as a writer. He honed his ability to create relatable characters, craft witty dialogue, and navigate different styles of humor. Perhaps the most significant development during this period was the birth of a concept that would later become Green Acres. In 1950, Summers created and produced a short-lived radio show called Granby's Green Acres. This show, though only lasting for eight episodes, laid the groundwork for his biggest television success. The premise of the show was quite interesting and held the attention of fans at the time. It follows a character called John Granby, a former bank teller with little to no farming experience, who impulsively decides to fulfill his lifelong dream of rural life. He convinces his wife Martha and their teenage daughter Janice to trade in their comfortable city life for a rundown farm. The show followed the Granby's hilarious struggles as they attempted to navigate the challenges of farm life, surrounded by quirky characters and facing situations they never could have anticipated. Years after Granby's Green Acres faded from the airwaves, Jay Summers found himself working alongside Paul Henning, the mastermind behind the Beverly Hillbillies. Henning, impressed by Summers' talent for rural comedies, encouraged him to revisit the concept of city folk struggling in the countryside. Summers, never forgetting the charm of Granby's Green Acres, adapted the show's premise for television. The result? Green Acres, the beloved sitcom that brought laughter to audiences for six seasons. While the television show featured a new cast, a different setting, and a few key changes like the introduction of the iconic Ebb and Haney duo, the core spirit of Granby's Green Acres remained intact. While the show's title and main characters differed from Green Acres, the core dynamic was strikingly similar. John Granby, played by the ever-grumpy Gail Gordon, later known for his role as Mr. Mooney on The Lucy Show, embodied Oliver Wendell Douglas's city slicker persona. B. Benedirette, another future sitcom legend who would play Betty Jo Bradley on Petticoat Junction, brought her comedic timing to the role of Martha Granby, a character with shades of Lisa Douglas's struggle to adapt to rural life. The supporting cast also offered a glimpse into the future of Green Acres. Louise Erickson's portrayal of Janice, the Granby's teenage daughter, mirrored the role of Lisa Douglas Jr. on television. However, there was one key difference. Granby's Green Acres featured a seasoned farmhand named Ebb, voiced by Parley Bear instead of the youthful and mischievous Ebb and Haney duo from the TV show. Green Acres capitalized on the popularity of rural sitcoms, but with a twist. Instead of focusing on quirky small-town life, it threw a successful city slicker, Oliver, into the hilarious chaos of a rural community. The show explored the clash between urban and rural cultures, highlighting the values and challenges of both worlds through Oliver's struggles with ornery pigs stubborn tractors, and the eccentric folks of Hooterville. But Green Acres wasn't just about the Douglases. The show's heart and soul came from its supporting cast. Ebb and Haney, the mischievous farmhands, Mr. Haney, the town grocer known for his outrageous schemes, Arnold Ziffel, the grumpy farmer who communicated with his pigs, and Mrs. Douglas, Lisa's overbearing mother. These unforgettable characters brought to life by a talented ensemble cast, provided endless comedy and a surprising amount of warmth. However, despite its popularity, Green Acres would not have a peaceful retirement in Hooterville. The reason for its cancellation, after six successful seasons, is a story that took everyone by surprise, given the strong presence of the show at the time. It turned out that the idyllic life of Hooterville was disrupted in the early 1970s by a shift in network priorities. CBS, the network that aired Green Acres, was facing a changing landscape. 
The network executives, worried about their image, felt that rural sitcoms like Green Acres, The Beverly Hillbillies, and Mayberry RFD were giving them a reputation for being too hick or out of touch with a more sophisticated audience. This perception, often referred to as the rural purge, led CBS to strategically cancel these shows, even though they maintained strong ratings. The network aimed for a more intellectual image, pursuing programming they felt would elevate their brand. This decision, however, left many fans of these shows, including Green Acres, feeling frustrated and confused. The cancellation sparked debates about catering to popular taste versus chasing a perceived image of prestige. Millions of viewers enjoyed the lighthearted humor and heartwarming characters of Green Acres, and its removal from the airwaves left a void for many. The story of Green Acres goes beyond just laughter and quirky characters. It's a story about the power of network decisions, the evolving tastes of television audiences, and the bittersweet reality that sometimes even beloved shows can't escape the tides of change. This cancellation has left a lasting legacy. Green Acres, despite its relatively short run, continues to be fondly remembered by fans. It serves as a reminder of the importance of both critical acclaim and audience connection in the world of television. While the network executives may have sought a different image, the enduring appeal of Green Acres lies in its ability to connect with viewers through humor, heart, and a relatable exploration of cultural differences. Some of you might just be wondering what the fate of the members of the cast is, so we have put together what has become of the cast. Being a classic American sitcom that aired from 1965 to 1971, Green Acres captivated audiences with its humorous portrayal of city slickers adjusting to rural life. The show starred several talented actors whose performances left a lasting impact on television history. Among them were Eddie Albert, Eva Gabor, Pat Buttram, Tom Lester, Alvy Moore, and Frank Cady, each contributing uniquely to the show's charm and longevity. Eddie Albert, renowned for his role as Oliver Wendell Douglas, passed away in 2005 at the remarkable age of 99. His portrayal of the earnest yet bumbling lawyer-turned-farmer endeared him to audiences, showcasing his comedic timing and warm presence. Albert's career spanned decades, encompassing roles in film, television, and theater. But his role in Green Acres remains one of his most memorable contributions to entertainment. In her own way, Ava Gabor, who played the glamorous and slightly eccentric Lisa Douglas, added a touch of sophistication to the show. Her character's witty one-liners and fashion-forward style became iconic, cementing Gabor's place in television history. Tragically, Ava Gabor passed away in 1995 at the age of 76, leaving behind a legacy of charm and humor that continues to resonate with fans of the show. Pat Buttram, known for his role as the lovably conniving salesman Mr. Haney, brought a delightful blend of mischief and wit to Green Acres. His character's schemes and southern charm provided comedic relief and memorable moments throughout the series. Buttram's passing in 1994 at the age of 78 marked the end of an era for fans who fondly remember his contributions to the show's humor and ensemble cast dynamics. What about Tom Lester? who portrayed the good-hearted farmhand Eb Dawson. He passed away in 2020 at the age of 81. Lester's portrayal of Eb, with his endearing innocence and country charm, resonated with viewers and showcased his acting versatility. His presence on Green Acres contributed significantly to the show's rural ambiance and comedic interplay, solidifying his place in television history alongside his co-stars. Alvy Moore, best known for his role as the scatterbrained county agricultural agent Hank Kimball, brought comedic brilliance to Green Acres. Moore's portrayal of Kimball, with his rapid-fire dialogue and quirky mannerisms, added depth to the show's ensemble cast and became a fan favorite. His death in 1997 at the age of 75 marked a loss for the entertainment industry and left fans reflecting on his memorable contributions to the series. Frank Cady, who played the multifaceted storekeeper Sam Drucker, passed away in 2012 at the age of 96. Cady's portrayal of Drucker, 
a pivotal character who bridged the gap between the rural community and the Douglas family, showcased his acting versatility and comedic timing. His career in film and television spanned decades, but his role in Green Acres remains a standout achievement that continues to entertain audiences through reruns and syndication. The cast members had a strong bond that held them together, which made them look out for each other when they were still active. As an instance of the bond that existed between them, people would often look at how they handled Tom Lester's hearing issues. Tom Lester, who played the character Eb Dawson on Green Acres, was the cast member who was mostly deaf. He had a significant hearing impairment, which required assistance from his fellow actors during filming. Despite his disability, Lester's talent and dedication enabled him to portray Eb with authenticity and charm, contributing to the show's success. His colleagues on the set, including Eddie Albert and Eva Gabor, reportedly helped accommodate his hearing needs during filming, demonstrating camaraderie and support within the cast. They would often have someone close to him who nudged him when it was time to say his line. It could have been much easier to pick a replacement, but they had already formed a familial bond that couldn't be broken by such a challenge. Despite the passing of these beloved actors, the legacy of Green Acres lives on through its enduring popularity and reruns. The show's unique blend of humor, memorable characters, and satirical commentary on rural versus urban life continues to resonate with audiences of all ages. Through television syndication, streaming platforms, and DVD releases, new generations have discovered the timeless appeal of Oliver and Lisa Douglas's quirky adventures in Hooterville. The reruns of Green Acres not only showcase the comedic talents of Eddie Albert, Eva Gabor, Pat Buttram, Tom Lester, Alvy Moore, and Frank Cady, but also highlight the show's cultural impact and enduring relevance. The characters' eccentricities, comedic situations, and witty dialogue have contributed to the show's status as a beloved classic, ensuring its place in television history. Beyond its entertainment value, Green Acres continues to serve as a cultural touchstone, reflecting societal attitudes and values of its time while offering timeless themes of community, adaptation, and the humor found in everyday life. The show's ability to entertain and provoke thought has solidified its legacy, making it a cherished part of television nostalgia and a testament to the enduring appeal of classic sitcoms. The deaths of Eddie Albert, Eva Gabor, Pat Buttram, Tom Lester, Alvy Moore, and Frank Cady marked the end of an era for Green Acres. But their contributions to television history and the show's enduring popularity through reruns ensure that their legacies will continue to entertain and inspire audiences for generations to come. As fans revisit the quirky charm and comedic brilliance of Hooterville, they celebrate the lasting impact of these talented actors and their unforgettable characters. We can't finish without talking about the fate of the man behind it all, Jay Summers. Jay Summers was no doubt a pivotal figure in the creation and success of the TV series Green Acres. He tragically passed away in 1985 due to heart disease. His death marked the end of an era for those who had worked closely with him in the television industry. Summers played a crucial role as one of the creators and writers of Green Acres, contributing significantly to the show's distinctive blend of humor and satire. Jay Summers' impact extended beyond his contributions to Green Acres, he began his career as a comedy writer and gained recognition for his wit and creativity in crafting engaging storylines and memorable characters. His work on The Andy Griffith Show, another iconic sitcom, further solidified his reputation as a talented writer capable of capturing the essence of American humor. In addition to his professional accomplishments, Jay Summers was known for his warmth and camaraderie among his colleagues. His collaborative spirit and dedication to his craft left a lasting impression on those who had the privilege of working with him. Regarding Jay Summers' family, details about his personal life are relatively scarce compared to his professional achievements. He maintained a relatively private life, focusing primarily on his career in television writing. As such, specific information about his family members, such as his spouse and children, is not widely documented in public sources. However, 
We know he was survived by his wife and five sons. Despite the brevity of his life, Jay Summers' legacy endures through the timeless humor of Green Acres and other beloved sitcoms he contributed to during his career. His creative vision and storytelling prowess continue to entertain audiences, ensuring that his impact on television comedy remains cherished and celebrated by fans and industry professionals alike. That will be all on this topic and we hope you are all caught up. If there are other details you would like to share, please do so in the comments and we will see you in the next one.